Hello, everyone. On behalf of WHO, I'd first like to thank the Federal Republic of Germany, and especially President Hans Christoph Eiden from the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food for hosting this important symposium, and the opportunity to say a few words. The title of this meeting, Breaking Through Influenza Information Walls, makes a statement that goes directly to the heart of one of the key issues in public health. That is, how can we collect, share, and use information in ways that are effective enough to safeguard the health of people around the world? As all of you know, one of these major challenges is influenza. The ability of these viruses to cause surprises and disease in human as well as animal populations and cause significant social and economic disruption is the basis for continuous concern among the scientific, public health, and agricultural sectors. The emergence of H5N1 in Hong Kong in 1997 and its subsequent reappearance and global spread starting in 2003 and 2004, and the emergence of a swine origin H1N1 virus in North America as a pandemic virus in 2009 are but two of the most notable recent such surprises. However, they are by no means the only such examples. These types of surprises often have significant adverse effects on communities. In this regard, much of the work of public and animal health is to minimize the surprise factor and to minimize the adverse consequences. The foundation of the fight against influenza is the availability of information that is timely, useful, and of high quality. The concept is simple, or at least seems that way, but in reality, what does this mean? In terms of the viruses, we need to understand when new strains or subtypes emerge. We need to understand their genetic and antigenic characteristics, as well as their host range and ability to cause disease. We also need to understand their patterns as they evolve over time. The basis of such information is surveillance. This conceptual approach and the real-world systems which exist to allow us to monitor these viruses and their features among both animal and human populations is needed for us to be aware of their potential risk and to take concrete steps to protect ourselves. We do this through research, through the development of vaccines, tests and antiviral medications, through sound public and animal health practices, and through communications with the public. We are now in an era in which many of the necessary components for conducting excellent surveillance exist. We track viruses and disease among people. We do the same among some animal populations. In many respects, though, we are still just learning how to link and utilize these systems optimally. But the need to move in this direction is now widely appreciated, and because of that, I am confident we will continue to make progress. In this regard, we are now fortunate to have other recent developments that are helping us move in this direction. One recent major development is the Pandemic Influenza Preparedness, or PIP, framework, which is an agreement among all member states of the WHO that explicitly recognizes the need for the sharing of viruses and information along with the benefits resulting from the sharing of that information. The PIP framework goes significantly further by establishing some of the principles and rules for how this should be done, as well as by providing some of the necessary tools such as the influenza virus tracking mechanism and standard material transfer agreements that were developed as part of the PIP framework. Through the implementation of the PIP framework, we expect to see a significant strengthening in global readiness for the next influenza pandemic. But in addition to the PIP framework, there are other important developments. Discussions among FAO, OIE, and WHO, as well as by their associated laboratory networks, are resulting in a much greater degree of sharing of information about potential pandemic influenza viruses. In the future, we look forward to seeing closer and more formalized relations between networks such as GISRIS on the human health side and OFLU on the animal health side. Finally, 
we had the development of critically important, important and technically advanced new platforms such as GISAID. This data sharing initiative provides an important option for sharing genetic sequence and epidemiological data. The hosting of this platform by the Federal Republic of Germany signifies an important level of engagement from a major country and scientific power and provides all countries with an important component of trust. WHO is fully supportive of the GISAID and any other initiative which promotes sharing and access to information in ways that are trustworthy, transparent, efficient, and timely. With that, I would like to end by saying that WHO joins you in the effort to break through information sharing walls and to wish you a very successful meeting. Thank you.